and he has those newspaper pictures that are different. I mean, he has those plates because he asked the man while he's working there, you're going to melt these down? Can I have them? And the guy said, sure. Uh, and so he got the plates and of course he doesn't know what to do with them because they don't make newspapers like that anymore. But they're pictures that haven't always been shown. Well, I'm sure you could try to sell them or you could donate them. To the I think we're thinking of <laughs> donating them to the museum. Uh, we've got to get a value on them. But he wants to do that. Because he, he kept them for historical purposes. He. I will uh, tell Stephen Fagan about you. Is that his name? Stephen Fagan is the person who does the oral histories here. Oh, great. And uh, the person who's been helping coordinate things for me to get this room and stuff. OK, great, thanks. <laughs> yeah. And I will also keep around for the call to see if you know, sometime we can get the art. OK. It's more interesting coming from the horse's mouth, don't you think? I do. OK. Well, it depends. If the horse is a good speaker. <laughs> 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 well, I guess so. I'm kind of partial. <laughs> I'm sure. Can you tell me if you ever saw the Oliver Stone film? JFK? Yes. What um, It was interesting. I'd never heard all that before. And you could see how that could happen, but I just, I just, movie makers are in the business of developing grandiose theories and stories and putting them to film. So I'm suspicious of its validity, but I think it was well done. I mean, if that was the story, he told it well. Uh, have you read any books on the subject? Or no, I haven't, although I heard something on TV, or was it a video? I can't remember. I don't get into it too much. Be because it's all just kind of grabbing it. Everything's so different, and people come up with these wild ideas, so I kind of discount everything. But I did hear this man who said he worked for the mafia, and he was just past the grassy knoll and was hired to shoot the president and shot the president, too, and worked for the mafia. So do you know who that was? Have you heard that? You have not seen that? Um, well, I have suspicions about what it is, but there's several documentaries. Are there? Well, it's a kind of docu yeah, documentary, I guess. I don't know how valid it is, but the way he told it, and that could be plausible. So it, anything uh, could be. Down here? Yeah. You know, I, I think they showed him on the grass, you know, or he stood where he was. Was it called like the second gunman? You know, I can't remember. Somebody I just thought. Mentioned something yesterday. And it was very convincing. I mean, it's just like Oliver Stone was kind of convincing. And so he was very convincing. And you don't know if he made it up and said, you know, this happened, like the lady who said she was Anastasia and she wasn't, or if it really happened. But you could see how it could happen. What things do you think help improve Dallas's Oh, after the assassination, I'll let you mean now. Um, I don't know, it took a long time. Um, business, it was, it was well known for business. DFW Airport helped. Um, the TV show Dallas, I mean, some people know about JFK worldwide, but Everybody knows about Dallas. They asked if JR went to my church. <laughs> I said, well, if JR went to church, no, he doesn't. He's a pretend person. But they just, you know, believed it. It's amazing what the media can do. Actually, I was in Turkey, and I was with my mother-in-law, and we were buying a small rug, and the man asked us if we knew JR. And then he said, do you know JR from your church? Because he knew we probably went to church that we were from the South. I don't know how he knew that, because he was an Arabic. And I just looked at him and thought, you've watched Dallas? <laughs> yeah. So, which is kind of sad that, that that was our image of greed and corrupt thinking and business dealings. So, 
I never saw the show, so, but I know everyone hated Jr. and loved the man America loved to hate <laughs> was Jr. So that kind of changed the image of Dallas. And the Cowboys um, football, that pro football, that was another image. But it took a, I mean, it was, it took a long time, I think, for the city to heal from that. I think the two assassins together in the same weekend, I think that really, the first one was kind of, oh, isn't that terrible and this happened in Dallas and why did it happen? But I think almost any city could picture that happening. But the second one of, of Jack Ruby walking up in front of the cameras and shooting Oswald, that's, that really sunk our cork for good. When you think that people are going to come here 10 years from now, 100 years from now, and beyond? I mean, not to Dallas, but to here. To the spot where, are, will they be interested in the Kennedy assassination? I don't know, they might be because my nieces and nephews are very interested in it. And, um, but Jacqueline Kennedy is, I mean, they remember Jacqueline Kennedy, so, and Carolyn Kennedy's still in the news, and their son, so I don't know. I would think yes, because Dallas is pretty good at promoting, and I think they'll promote it for, I mean, there are a lot of tourists who come here to see this. So what you're wondering is, will tourists be interested in the future? I don't know. One guy. I mean, I wasn't harassed, but my sister fell for it hook, line, and sinker. She just said, oh, I'll buy it. You know. And he said, be sure to buy it for me. She said, I'll buy it when I come out. And then he said, be sure to buy it for me. I only saw one, and I just ignored him. And she, then she stopped and went back and bought one for me. She said, I might as well get it now. So kind of, I guess. I, I wouldn't have paid any attention to him. Why is that? Just another... <laughs> Another promoting, but I like the museum. I think the museum is, is good at the way they present things and, and um, it's more objective. I like the way the museum handles that. So, after talking it through and, and whatnot, who do you think uh, actually decided that the president go? Who decided? Well, you know, that's what the Warren Report says. But it seems so likely that the Mafia would do it. So I'm still up in the air. I'm not sure. But I can certainly see the Mafia putting a price on President's head. How do you think that would be successfully covered up this whole time? Well, maybe they just kill off, to, you know, like building the pyramids. They just killed off the people who were involved. But at the time, I had total confidence in the Warren report because I couldn't see why the Warren Commission would lie. But also, I see they didn't have the technology that we have, so they were hampered, maybe. So you think they did act in good faith? Yes, I do. I do. I just don't think they knew it as much as we know now and didn't have all the information to glean and come to the same conclusion. Would they come to that same conclusion today? I don't know. I know Jacqueline Kennedy, when she was getting out of the, I mean, she, when she's crawling out and they said she's trying to get the Secret Service man, she was trying to leave the limousine. And she said, they're shooting, my God, they're shooting at us. And she was trying to leave. But you don't hear that now, so why not? I don't know. So, I, you know, the media can pick what they want people to hear and what they don't want them to hear. And why do you think that? I think that Jacqueline Kennedy was an icon, and they, they wanted to believe, you know, they would hate 
that, that somehow she might come down a step in everyone's estimation if she was trying to escape the car instead of grab the Secret Service man to come help her with her husband. But the way my husband talked, that once, I think at first she leaned towards him when he was first shot, and then the second shot, when the way my husband talks about his brains and blood were all over that car, that she thought, my husband's gone and, and they're shooting at me next, and they got Conley, and you know, she was scary. I would have done the same thing. I think that's a, a natural reaction. But nobody mentions that. Um, one other thing. Uh, you heard about the efforts to try to rename a street for Kennedy? No, I haven't heard that. You mean the this street right here? Um, different people have different have Elm different or streets. Elm and Maine are both mentioned. Oh no, I didn't know that. What did you think of that idea? Well, I can see why they want to do it because that would sink it in everyone's mind is historical but then it's different it's a different name than the historical triple underpass Elm Main so I wouldn't want to change it if they changed it I wouldn't be upset but I wouldn't try to change it because then when you go up there and they say well Elm was renamed this why not just keep it Elm but I can see why they want to do that. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Something I neglected to ask? Or? I think uh, people don't realize, or they've forgotten, um, that Kennedy was the first Catholic president. And that was very significant at the time. And nobody ever talks about that either. And it was such a huge thing. And I don't know why it was huge. I was younger. But that was something. And everyone was afraid the Pope would run America. Who, you know, that were, they were talking, the grown-ups. And you hear, well, you know, if the Pope says do this, that's what they'll do because they're Catholic. Because we'd never had a Catholic president. And, of course, that after he was elected, that never came and to focus, so. And that's, and um, my father, who worked with Time Life, I asked him if they knew what was going on with the women back then, why they didn't report it. And back then, there was a um, kind of understood agreement between reporters and presidents that, that they wouldn't report any dirt on presidents. And now it's different. But back then, you just didn't say anything bad. Like you didn't say anything bad about the Queen, I mean, and LBJ. And all. What did you think of LBJ? Well, my stepfather, who interviewed him and was kind of professional friends with him, liked him because he was a larger than life Texan. Uh, you know, on his ranch in his Cadillac, shooting deer, you know, or whatever, and going 100 miles an hour over his pastures in his special car, and the report, and the Secret Service men couldn't keep up, and you know, he just thought it was it was a grand kind of Texan thing to do. He thought he was a very cagey politician, a little bit shady. But he also wanted to do great things for America, and the Vietnam War just sapped him of all energy. But, um, you know, he did the civil rights. I mean, he did a lot of good things, too. Good and bad. Everybody does good and bad. Um, when I mentioned politics earlier, I was wondering if you find it unusual or at all interesting how the South has Well, I know Texas certainly has. Um, Dallas used to be an a Republican island, and the rest of Texas was Democratic. And I do think that's interesting. I think the problem is that the Democrats have not come up with the right um, they, they don't see the side of their party that is the conservative Democrat. 
and that some Republicans, I think, would change over to Democrat if they were more conservative, like I feel. Um, and um, so the people they've had running haven't been, I think they've lost an edge there. There used to be a whole set of conservative Democrats. Conservative meaning, you know, just cautious about budget, things like that. And um, now the caricature of a Democrat, to me, when I hear people talk, is, oh, they'll just spend all the money. They'll just go in and give away money, 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 and programs and entitlements and all that sort of thing. And then it'll be hard to change it once it's done. And that, they do that monetarily. They'll do that with the economics. They'll do that with the politics. They'll do that with everything. Because that's kind of their platform. And um, that's kind of the image they project. And um, Clinton really, I think, his shenanigans hurt the Democratic Party a whole lot. And that the Democratic Party stood by, you know, it was, it was a real blow. So you see the Democratic Party is very different from the Kennedy? No, I see it a lot like it. It's just you report on it now. You didn't report on it back then. I mean, um, Clinton wanted to be like Kennedy. Kennedy was one of his icons. So he was more like Kennedy than we knew at the time of Kennedy. He's handsome. And he's smart. And he's uh, engaging. He's got a very charismatic personality. And, um, you know, people think, well, if he can't run his own household and keep his own life in tow, how can he run a government of the most powerful nation in the world. So there's, there's, I mean, it just seemed, and when he left the White House and his staff, um, and they played all those tricks and glued, put porno on the screens and glued drawers shut, that just seemed like something out of college drinking buddies deal. It didn't seem like a statesman's staff. It, it was, it was, and then they took the furniture. I, it just, and then he let all those criminals go. I, even the Democrats were disappointed. It, it really, Clinton, it's too bad. He had the potential to really do better, I think. What do you think of George W? I like him. Um, I think he's very straightforward, and it's a nice for a change, and uh, you pretty much know what he thinks. And um, I think he was the man for the moment for the 9-11 crisis. And of course, nobody thought anything like that would happen. That isn't why he was voted on. But I remember um, when Clinton was in power and he, and there was the, um, we were talking about reelecting him and I said, but he went to Canada and didn't serve in the armed forces. I mean, and he's gonna be our commander in chief. And someone said, well, that doesn't matter. I said, well, would you want this man to send your son to war if we went to war? And they said, we're not going to war. And look at us, three years later. When I asked that question, three years later, here we are being attacked. And I was glad that Clinton was no longer president. And I was glad George Bush was. I often think of that um, because we hear stories now how ill he was, that he was a very sick, physically sick man, and I forget what all the problems were, but um, it's an interesting, yes, I do think it'd be different. I don't know. I do think the Kennedy clan would, I mean, even now with Ted Kennedy and Chapadawick, he's still senator. So I think the Kennedy aura and charisma has a hold of the American psyche. And I think we as a culture have become more personality oriented instead of character oriented. 
and that the Kennedys are very charismatic and their whole family has this hold on America and so I think they would influence us in the way we think. I can't think of anything else. Well, I appreciate your time. You're very welcome.